osteomyelitis is the topic and osteomyelitis from the term itis as you can deduce is inflammation but in addition to inflammation you also tend to have a destruction uh, of the bone as well so we'll that's what we'll talk about in this video uh, most common reason this happens is because there's usually an open wound and the open wound acts sort of as a source of infection and 80% of the time the pathogen is staph aureus and um, most of the questions on the licensing exams tend to deal with this bug um, there's one other bug that tends to be tested a lot and that's uh, when you have osteomyelitis in patients that have sickle cell they tend to be um, infected with salmonella uh, but what's interesting a uh, really uh, important tidbit uh, even in sickle cell patients the number one uh, pathogen is staph aureus where salmonella is actually number two so just keep that in mind so you've got osteomyelitis OM you've got inflammation of the bone uh, and you've got also this bony destruction that tends to be pretty severe so how will a patient uh, present what kind of symptoms most commonly in acute osteomyelitis we're talking really about acute you'll have a, a patient presenting with a fever and then the local area of the bone will be warm it will be tender and there will be swelling and it will be erythematous and in addition there may be uh, not always, but usually, as there's some uh, sort of uh, ulcer or open wound uh, that uh, has acted as the source of the infection, and this uh, infection has penetrated deep down into the bone. And also, there might be um, some sinus drainage. Uh, not always, but there could be. So, this is how the patient will present. Now, the most important thing I really wanted to illustrate in this uh, video is the how do, how do you work this up? What's the workup of the osteomyelitis? And this is what I'm going to show you is exactly the way it's done um, in a patient that's suspected uh, with osteomyelitis. The first thing, of course, is just the basic blood tests, uh, the CBC, where you're really looking at the white blood cell count, which will be elevated. Then you order these very nonspecific indicators of inflammation erythrocyte sedimentation rate and C-reactive protein these will be elevated because there's inflammation but they just tell you that there's inflammation somewhere it doesn't really give you much more than that after that then you would most likely do uh, x-rays but remember x-rays are good for fractures and things like that but they're not really that helpful with uh, osteomyelitis then you will do a blood culture and the blood culture is done in order to find um, uh, pathogens, isolate the pathogen. But unfortunately, it's not the best test for osteomyelitis. There's two tests that really are the key ones uh, for osteomyelitis. The, f the first one, after you've done all these, of course, the CBC, the ESR, X-ray, blood culture, is you have to do an MRI, an MRI scan uh, of the uh, bone and um, the next one is really the the one that actually allows you to create the optimal therapy and that is you have to do a bone biopsy a test where you take the tissue and you send it for a culture and you do antibiotic testing so it will involve a culture of tissue uh, and antibiotic sensitivity testing and this is very important to remember because you have to do this ideally before initiating antibiotics so before you actually give those antibiotics you should do this bone biopsy to isolate the organism and get the antibiotic sensitivity testing so very important to remember that treatment well as you can deduce by now the treatment is antibiotics the antibiotics of course are given IV and the most common antibiotics are what they call anti-staph penicillins since staph is the most common anti-staph penicillin PCN and uh, some of those are nafcillin oxacillin 
those are some of the more common IV anti-staph penicillins. Uh, if necessary, you also do surgical debridement. And what that means is basically you're going in and uh, removing surgically uh, the necrotic tissue. So, the removal of necrotic tissue, dead tissue, from the site of osteomyelitis in the bone. So let's take a look at a couple clinical vignettes. 12-year-old boy presents with fever, localized warmth, swelling, and pain of his right lower extremity. Closer physical exam reveals a 1 centimeter ulceration on the medial surface of the proximal left tibia with a small sinus tract that drains purulent material. X-rays does not show any fracture, but ESR and WBC levels are elevated. Uh, concerned with the possibility of acute osteomyelitis, you order a blood culture and an MRI, which show bone destruction and inflammation consistent with osteomyelitis, which of the following is the next step in the management of this patient. This patient basically has osteomyelitis. We've definitely concluded that. Now they want to know what's the next step. Well, let's go through these one at a time. Bone marrow testing does not play a role. Surgical debridement, if necessary. Now we're left with A or B. Should we give antibiotics right away, or should we actually do the biopsy and the culture and antibiotic sensitivity testing? Well, you need to um, do a bone biopsy, and that what it does is it provides tissue for culture, and then you can also do antibiotic sensitivity testing. Biopsy and culture should precede antibiotic therapy, so this should be done first. And then you can do this and it would be IV. Next one, an eight-year-old boy with sickle cell presents with left leg pain and high fever. He has been refusing to walk since yesterday. On physical exams, temperature is 103, blood pressure is 122, pulse is 102, respirations are 20. His left femur is tender to palpation three centimeters above the left knee, and there is marked soft tissue swelling. A plain film of his left leg is normal. A bone scan shows increased uptake around the metaphysis of the left femur, which of the following is most likely pathogen? Uh, this is a good question uh, because this part here kind of makes you think of salmonella. And salmonella is indeed a very common cause of osteomyelitis in sickle cell patients. But overall, number one, even in sickle cell patients, the pathogen is always Staph aureus. So in the general population, Staph aureus is the most common pathogen, and Staph aureus is also the most common pathogen, even in patients with sickle cell.